I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and welcome to the Cisco Certification Video Practice Exam, where today the topic is a little bit of everything. We usually dedicate the video practice exam to one particular topic, but every once in a while I like to give you questions on different topics to get you used to the kind of thing you'll be going through, of course, on exam day, whether you're taking the CCNA or CCNP exams. Also, if this is your first time taking one of my video practice exams, I want to give you a little bit of a warning. We go through the questions quickly, so if you need to pause the video for a moment, that's great. If you need to consider your answer, because I like to have plenty of time at the end of the video to not only give you the answers, but to show you the answers on live Cisco routers and switches. So we'll definitely be doing that here with these questions. And here's your first one. Which of these allows the use of a wildcard mask in the network statement. Which of these, and of course with my questions, multiple choice, it's always choose all that apply. And I know those aren't always fun, but you'll thank me on exam day. Now, which of these must match in order for potential OSPF neighbors to actually become neighbors? Which of those needs to match? Which of these is an option with the IP route command? And by the way, remind me for extra credit, what do we use the IP route command for? And there may be a clue on that screen and there may not be. So which of these is an option with IP route? And then finally, a short answer question, what's the STP port cost of a fast ethernet port on a Cisco switch? That's a good one to know. So let's go back to the first question, which of these allows the use of a wildcard mask? Well, with RIP version 1 and RIP version 2, you know, we have those differences between the two that we have to have down for our CSENT and CCNA exams, definitely. Well, let's bring the equipment up here, and I'll just go ahead and enter router RIP, and I'll give us a little room there to work with. And let's say that we're just going to put a network statement in here. I'll use iOS help to look at our options and you see that we actually don't have any, which is kind of rare. It always seems like we have a couple of options, right? But with RIP version 1 or 2, you do not have the option to use a wildcard mask in the network statements. You do have that option with both OSPF and EIGRP. EIGRP wildcard masking is optional, but it is highly recommended. Now, which of these must match in order for these potential OSPF neighbors to actually become neighbors? A is incorrect because OSPF doesn't actually use an AS number. That's an autonomous system number, and that's used by EIGRP. OSPF doesn't care about the port cost matching. That's not part of the process. And speaking of process, this process number does not have to match between potential OSPF neighbors. That's when we put, and let me bring that up actually. I'll bring up our router OSPF here. And we'll use iOS help to show you that this is the process ID. And you definitely want to keep that straight between OSPF and EIGRP. Because with EIGRP, and let's take a look at that right here on the live equipment. What's our choice there? We're going to put an autonomous system number in the router EIGRP statement, and this does have to match between prospective neighbors. But with OSPF, it's the same range of numbers, but it is a process ID, and that does not have to match between potential OSPF neighbors. That is locally significant only. So, going back here, D though, dead time, the neighbors do have to agree on hello and dead time. So the only one we're looking there that has to match is D. Which of these is an option with IP route? I mentioned also what does the IP route command do? I did mention static route here in this choice, but of course C might have been wrong, so uh, that wasn't necessarily a clue, but actually it was. The IP route command is used to create static routes. Now here I put local exit interface physical, and local exit interfaces IP address. If you are going to specify the local exit interface on an IP, with the IP route command, what you've got to do then is specify the physical name of the interface. If you put in the IP address, you're going to use that when you are specifying the next hop IP address. Let me bring that up as well. 
and we'll just um, bang one out here. And remember, we're using a prefix mask here, not a wildcard mask. And we've got a couple of choices here, but you'll notice that any time we're using, like, say, if we wanted our uh, traffic font matching this to be sent out Ethernet 0, you would not put in the IP address of the local Ethernet interface. What you would do is just type in Ethernet at this point and then Ethernet 0, 1, or whatever it happens to be. If you see an IP address in the IP route statement, that is the forwarding router's address. That is the next hop IP address. So again, if you're using the local exit interface, that's going to be the physical interface. Now, we don't use wildcard masks, as I mentioned, but what about this administrative distance of the static route? Let's say that I put 172.12.123.2 here for the next top IP address. You do have the option to change the administrative distance of a static route. And you'll do that when you're creating something called a floating static route. And I do have a, a video tutorial for that, a multi-part one, I believe, here on YouTube as well as other video sharing sites. So if you're not familiar with floating static route, that may be one you want to watch before you take your exams. But you can change the administrative distance of the static route. And then finally, what's that STP port cost we were talking about? Let's call up a switch here, and we can take a quick look at it. Let me go back to my server and we'll go up to switch one. And you can see this 11 and 12, these two ports are fast Ethernet ports. You'll have to take my word for that one. But you can also see what their cost is, is 19. This is a uh, regular Ethernet port, but these are fast Ethernet ports, and their default port cost is 19. That's a good one to know because you do run into that one a lot out in the field, and then when you're working with Ether channels, you'll see that cost change as well. So thanks for taking a few minutes out of your day to take this video practice exam. We've got uh, almost 100 other videos on YouTube and on the Bryant Advantage blog and website as well, so I invite you to take a few minutes to watch those as well, or actually a few hours at this point. Again, thanks for watching today's video. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933.